Hey guys, listen, um, Ibrahim. You know, I know say you all have seen the uh, video of Francis Ben Kaifala, the ACC commissioner getting married. You know, and um, uh, uh, it's a lot of mixed feelings, right? And we can look at this from multiple fronts. First, let's say getting married is a beautiful thing. I mean, we all want to see and promote, you know, people getting married, you know, so they can build a family and get a constructive society. That is what we're looking for. So we applaud people getting married, right? That's one aspect of it. So you know, I'm not coming here to, um, uh, you know, discourage anybody from getting married. Everybody understands that fact, right? I was married when I was about 25. You know, I was already married. I didn't wait until, you know, um, I had money or I had uh, all the education or uh, I was in government or became, uh, you know, a, a government official, right? I got married at a very early age and um, I knew I had to build with my wife and we've built together. That is the whole thing here, right? But today in Sierra Leone, you've all seen the level of, uh, you know, uh, poverty. You know, prostitution is on the rise. You know, um, the drug epidemic is on the rise and everything. So when you see people that are in positions of authority and power, you know, flaunting this much opulence, you know, flaunting this flamboyance or uh, just uh, the elegance in um, this much papi show, where is my body papi show with this in wedding, you know, um, it, it sends chills down a lot of the spines of Sierra Leoneans across the world. You know, because um, we know, say, we did it like a country where the people live on less than a dollar a day, right? Uh, so uh, what we've done is, what I've done personally is write a letter, first of all, to Avad Law and some other the institutions, them, copy other people and let them see, you know, um, uh, the pains and sufferings of uh, Sierra Leoneans and compare that with uh, the kind of married with the Anti-Corruption Commission of Sierra Leone, the married. This man hold a very pivotal position in our country. Right, and then you see how this exposed the fact that they even have a sort of a very unprofessional relationship with the first family, even though they're illegal now. The president and wife and everything, and you've all seen the videos of uh, the first lady saying that uh, Ben Kaifala calls her sis, you know, and um, uh, he stops by, and uh, they have this kind of a relationship. And for somebody who's the anti-corruption commissioner. And we all know that in the past, uh, the first lady was accused of corruption. And uh, we all know that she should not be receiving millions of dollars that she got into her bank account. And this was exposed by African Express. The first lady came out and denied any funds being transferred to her until the evidences came out. And then Francis Ben Kaifala was quick to say that I'm going to go back and investigate all the other first ladies, you know, because again, it was playing cover for these people. So this matter has exposed, you know, um, uh, the, the level of unprofessionalism and um, you know, kind of relationship that should not exist between the First Lady and an anti-corruption commissioner of a whole nation in Sierra Leone. And that is why we've seen corruption not being fought at any level at all. So that is why this is very concerning to a lot of us, because we know now, see, not just the wedding, how flamboyant and expensive this wedding is, it is the fact that this man has close, very close ties to the First Family, to the President, to the point where the President had to even bless his wedding. That is a shame. The only relationship that should exist between these people if he's getting married, that's one. Marabio is not the father of Ben Kaifala. They're not related other than being Sierra Leoneans or from the Southeast. Francis Ben Kaifala has parents that could bless the wedding and all of that. But for the president of the nation, who this man should investigate? You all remember when the president's office was caught with, you know, uh, charged with, you know, double dipping, forging and money laundering, you know, from the, the auditor general. Nothing was done about that. To this day, nobody was arrested in the office of the president. So this is why it is not normal. And I want every Sierra Leonean to understand that this is not normal. This kind of activity where the president has to bless the wedding of the anti-corruption commissioner, it is not normal. It should not happen. We should not condone it. Where are the civil society organizations? Where are the journalists in Sierra Leone? Where are the, the imams, the pastors? Where is the opposition in Sierra Leone when things like these are happening? It is not about the wedding. That's one. The flamboyance, the opulence, the, 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 the ostentatiousness of the wedding and all, all of that. How many Sierra Leoneans can afford to put a wedding like that together? This man is the anti-corruption commissioner. How people are dying. They cannot even afford to buy a bag of rice these days. And these are the things we're talking about. The insensitivity of this man. Because Sierra Leoneans are suffering. You have to feel your pain. This is what you call empathy. You have to realize and understand that, okay, I'm going to get married. Let me do it quietly and softly. Maybe we can see photos later, one or two photos of the wedding later. That's fine. But to, 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 to get the president to bless the wedding, 
So get the first lady coming out and talking about, you know, whenever I have issues, I'll call him, he'll come to my head, he'll help me, he has always respected me in this and that and all that nonsense. It is not normal. This would not happen in America. It would not happen in, in, in European countries. Everywhere where democracy thrives, these kind of flagrant, you know, uh, um, you know abuse would not happen there and go unpunished. Francis Kefala should, should resign. He should be fired. But are we going to call on the government to fire him? No, because they're not going to do it. That is why we've written letters to the Avad Law, where he recently got his LLM from. We've written to these people to understand and watch and see what is actually happening in Sierra Leone. Because it's not about us. It's not about people like myself. I'm okay. I'm in the United States. I'm fine. I'm protected. I'm, 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 I have what I have. But these guys are back home in Sierra Leone, in a country where, you know, the economy is free-falling every day. People don't even know what, where the next meal is coming from. Our sisters are, 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 are relying on prostitution to, to make a living for themselves. Our brothers are, and sisters are engaged in kush and drugs just to forget about their problems. But yet you have these guys flaunting their wealth in front of the people of that country. It is not right. It is not fair. It should not happen. And we should not see it as a normal thing. It should be condemned by everybody, every opposition leader, every journalist in Sierra Leone. But don't forget, he even married the journalist uh, at AYV this lady that, that he married to. So why, why would AYV sum up the gumption of the courage to even talk about this wedding and condemn it, if not even just promote the wedding itself? But we as Sierra Leoneans have a responsibility to see that this is not normal. The ACC, the Anti-Corruption Commissioner, should not be bonding with the First Lady or the First Family or the President of that nation. No, it should be a professional relationship. If he's getting wedded, it should invite them to the wedding and that's it. Maybe they grace the occasion and just be there. That's it. But to express the, the, the level of relationship, the, the, the level of connection that they have, which is why corruption has not been fought over these years. We've seen from the Auditor General reports and everything, the amount of money that is going missing and there's the stealing, the, the, the thieving that is going on and nobody's fighting against it. That is why we as Sierra Leoneans should not accept this as a normal phenomenon. Okay? This is not normal. We should not accept it. We should condemn this. We should write to international organizations to condemn this man, to show that what he's doing is nepotism, it's tri tribalism, it's corruption. And that is why he's not fighting the corruption in the first place, that he should fight to prevent our brothers and sisters from getting into drugs, from getting into prostitution. You know, um, uh, the people, salaries are not paid every day. Look at the healthcare system in the country. Look at the water in this country. Francis Benkefela has a responsibility to protect our people, protect our democracy. And that is why we're going to take up this fight with international organizations, because we know the president is not going to fire him or he's not going to resign. But the international organizations like the Harvard Law School, all of these people should see and know that these guys are corrupt and they are responsible for the demise of Sierra Leone today. The World Bank, all of these organizations, they're all part of the game, but they should know that we are seeing these things and people like myself who are sane enough should know that what is happening in Sierra Leone should not happen because it would not happen in any civilized democracy where the president, having this close relationship to the anti-corruption commissioner who's supposed to investigate them, how can he investigate anybody? It is not normal, don't accept this, condemn this kind of thing. There shouldn't be no relationship between these people that is personal to that point. It works for the people of Sierra Leone, and it should prosecute corruption in that country so that the lives of the people can be improved. I'll leave it here. From what I don't know, Ben, to today, one day me and Ben know FTI. From what I don't know, Ben, if you Ben call me in the morning, they will say, sis, and they pass by. One day, they know they call me Fatima, one day, they know they call me Fosley. Say sis at the time. Sis, I want to see. And when I call them, I will say whatever you do left and I will come with you know I don't pull out. Because I trust him. And he has been there for me. And I'm ready to be there for him. I have been there for him and I'm continuing to be there for him. And I want to congratulate them. And I want to say to them, you my way marry, go go marry and also crash crash for now. Just in case. So then after marriage, I don't tell her. Before you married to me, before they married to me, they married. every morning they would tell you, my love, my daddy. When you see the marriage doctor now, they will say, okay, I'll see you later. So I will say, oh, did you forget to say something? And then, so no, no, no forget for the reminder. Just say, did you forget something? And then you will hear, you know, when they married, they will say, I love you.